blackened Metallica, and that's just the intro. Uh, going way back to that uh, and Justice for All album, but um, <clears throat> this is a liberal snowflake who's completely melted because it's summer. Uh, complete meltdown that I've went into as Rush Limbaugh predicted, and I wanted to be that guy that would uh, do this, but. Um, you know, the right has some interesting people, especially those who are out there on alternative media who are not um, necessarily espousing uh, hatred. They're actually just given alternative ideas. Um, I don't embrace them. I mean, I embrace the fact that they do it. I don't necessarily think what people say or their conspiracy theories are always true, but to not investigate, to not look at the facts, to not look at information out there and just assume oh it's it didn't come from msnbc and cnn so we we cannot believe it it has to be an official news story and what i saw today uh on social media was the wall street journal of all people in the field that the wall street journal is in which is finance which has some of the most corrupt alternative news sources that come from the financial media you'll ever know of is talking about the fake news and like something needs to be done. Dear Wall Street Journal, where the fuck were you when people were getting fed bullshit stories about stocks that ended up collapsing? The fake news media? The fake news media? What about the fake financial news media in the Wall Street Journal having the nerve to now suddenly jump on the fake news media bandwagon? I'm pissed at that. It just doesn't seem right. I mean, Wall Street Journal, dear Wall Street Journal, you could have jumped on the fake news bandwagon a long time ago. I have to say that's bullshit, Wall Street Journal. Bullshit. I, I know you guys do some good things with statistics and you do print some true stories, but you need to regulate your own field of news. And that's financial news, which is some of the most bullshit uh, uh, stories that you could ever get come from the financial news sector. Um, okay, so when we start talking about fake news and politics and the media, that's all good. But don't forget financial news, dear Wall Street Journal. And I haven't read your article, so I'm just reacting. I can't read everything that's ever been written. So if someone's like, hey, you don't know what you're freaking talking about, Mr. Mr. Snowflake, well, let me know. But I thought I would, let, let's get off of that. I, I wanted to throw a, uh, uh, if I were a tinfoil hat wearing conspiracy theorist, and wanted to incite your thinking, even if what the conspiracy theory says is ultimately not true. Or it may be true, I don't know, or it may have parts of it that are true. But I thought I would throw something out there. I already tried to burn Wall Street Journal. Here they are, the ones in, in the field that has some of the most fake news stories you'll ever see in the financial sector. And now they want to jump into the Trump liberal conservative bandwagon uh, of, of, of trying to chastise fake news. But let's go on to my conspiracy theory. Uh, not my conspiracy theory, or is it my conspiracy, conspiracy theory? I don't know. But caution. Uh, let me read some of this, this lunacy that somebody wrote. I'm not taking credit for it. Somebody else wrote it, right? Um, untrue lunatic conspiracy theory. Another one of those. Poor people are doing the destruction to their own trapped colleagues or, say, fellow poor people. Are poor people hurting each other? I don't know. We don't talk about things like that, do we? But the poor people are doing destruction to their own own fellow poor uh, citizens that the rich could never do on their own to them. So they got some help from from the dumbasses. The dumbasses are surrounded by sometimes when you live in poverty. There's a reason why you're poor. Sometimes it's not just because you're dumb, though. Sometimes it's because you're too damn honest. The, a lot of honest people are poor. They may be extremely smart, but they're honest. And, and and I'm not saying all rich people are dishonest. Okay, I didn't write this damn conspiracy theory. Any anyhow, is a tin foil hat wearer did. But it said, you know, it's a two. You know, let's go on and read this. It says it's a two for one. Um, you get a two for one uh, where the corporations sell, uh, you know, destructive but socially approved products, and they fuck themselves over while paying the rich corporations or the rich 
people, not just the rich people in general. There's people that do construction that are quite wealthy, but they kill themselves. They work very hard for their money, right? Some scientists work very hard, some computer, you know, whatever. I, I don't want to run through the whole list of, of people that do work hard, that have money and deserve it. I mean, who in the hell am I? Am I to go around saying who deserves money or not? No, that's not my point. But it, it's a two for one. The corporations get to take money from people by selling them shit. Okay, uh, that, the, yeah, the corporations do some good things. We need them. We know that. I'm not saying you got to get rid of corporations or what have you. I'm not saying that. Go back to wearing potato sacks and shit. We never wore potato sacks, though, come to think of it. But anyhow, if we did. Um, <clears throat> and, and now you have poor people stunning intellectual growth and health all on their own of fellow poor people. How is that so, Mr. Conspiracy Theorist? Well, we have conspiracy theorists who talk about chemtrails and the rich are gassing us, but but is that really something we need? I mean, we there's really no need to poison the masses at the bottom because they will crush themselves. And why? Them and their stupid families will crush themselves. Well, we all have stupid family members. Maybe we're considered, maybe I'm considered a stupid family member. I don't know. I'm being ridiculous. Okay, don't take everything super serious here. But the elites have given them every tool that they would need to destroy themselves, especially their health. Well, cheap cigarettes. You live in a crowded com apartment complex where, you know, cigarette smoke can just go everywhere, right? So you got cheap cigarettes where they can spread cigarette smoke and their bad addictions everywhere in their apartment complex. Cigarette smoke can't harm you. At least that's what some people say. Oh, cigarette smoke never harmed me. And even though some studies say it actually makes you dumber by shrinking your blood vessels that go to your brain, no big deal. Smoking's good for you. And then it says, oh, and cigarette smoking may increase your risk of kidney cancer 50%. Oh, that's just something minor. That's for those who have bad genetics, right? Well, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't even know how to evaluate that stupid statement I just made. Who would make a statement like that? A tinfoil hat wearer would. And those who have to smell your secondhand smoke may be at a greater risk for skin cancer. It's no big deal. Who cares if the poor people who live in overcrowded complexes placed there in projects that the rich people developed, but the poor people were too smart to live in a proper way that could benefit themselves and everybody around them and learn and educate themselves, and they turn it into one big hellhole. I don't know what the hell that means. You can go ahead and rewind this and listen and listen and listen again. Maybe you'll learn something, but probably not. The poor have access to cheap sound devices that will constantly distract and frustrate concentrated learning efforts throughout the community. Oh, well, you must be pretty weak if you can't concentrate under noise 24-7, loud barking dogs and people playing music all day. And you got only 15 people around you who do different things at different times and have no consideration for anybody around them except themselves and their families and what they want. And even they don't like their own family. So there you go. Never mind, um, it takes 10,000 hours to really get good at something, but with the poor and their car stereos, sound devices and barking dogs and family arguments everywhere, no one can think straight, let alone read and have any spare time, because any spare time is for working jobs with other idiots like themselves, because welfare forces you to work a job if you're going to get welfare. Nobody gets welfare if they don't work. Well, that's not quite true, but it is sort of true, and so what? But anyway, how I'm trying to appease the Tea Party listeners who may hate me right from the get-go. I call myself a liberal snowflake who's completely melted down because it's summer, right? And when the job is done, when the poor person gets off work, coming home to learn, read, and plan, and that's just not their cup of tea. They got to go out and drink and smoke more cigarettes, buy marijuana. And so even if a poor person caught... Uh, so. A poor person caught in these endless ghettos or bad behavior around them are going to pick up the bad behavior around them, even if they did decide to rise up uh, and and uh, make their attempt, uh, it would be futile because we've created a system of blocking each other, especially the poor people blocking other poor people. So I guess the answer is to move a dysfunctional poor family into where rich people live. Of course, some liberals are suggesting that, but I don't know if that would help. I have no idea. I haven't ran that experiment. But anyhow, poor people's living conditions in some ways are worse than in the early 1900s. <gasps> oh my God, you can't say that. No, nothing is worse than the 1900 slums, okay? Corporations have fixed all the problems that we have, and there's no problem with poor people affecting poor people's behavior. There's no problem such as that. No, it can't be true. It can't be true. It can't be true. No, the 1900s and... You know, they didn't have running water and blah, blah, blah. Okay, okay, okay. I, I don't think that's what this conspiracy theorist meant. I think what they're trying to say is now the social problems are, are the, the physical problems with engineering and technology is okay. It's gotten better. So you have running water and sewers and you have to smell everybody's shit. 
But uh, you do have to put up with everybody's shit when it comes to their music, their noise, their inability to respect their neighbors. Because you live so close to construction, such thin walls. Everybody has to deal with everything, the smoking, the music. And, and uh, it's like being in college 24-7, although you're a 40-year-old, 50-year-old, 60-year-old man. It doesn't matter. You're trapped with all the poor people who have horrible behaviors that are not going to lead to success. But we can't talk about that because that's too complicated. Get a job. You're an individual. Take responsibility. This is, of course, reason 10,900 for why this stupid, weird conspiracy tinfoil hat wearer says, I want to be rich to escape the ever-growing moronic trends of the poor, which had a lot of help from the corporations. So this is a tinfoil hat wearer signing off with a jab at every fucking buddy, everybody. I'm trying to get everybody pissed off. So let me say you have no fucking idea what is going on if you are a conservative nut or a liberal snowflake watching only mainstream media. Who in the hell writes this shit? I didn't. None of this is true. Don't read it. And so we're about to close up here. I'm running a little long. This is short sound bites and I'm running off. I hope you're entertained, but maybe you're not. <clears throat> and maybe you just tuned out. But there is no way corporations have anything to do with shaping the poor habits of America. It's all the individual's responsibility because they have the ability in the environment that supports perfect decision making. How could Apple, Apple Incorporated or cigarette companies like Philip Morris shape anyone's behavior? This is such nutty talk from this conspiracy lunatic. This post, this should be banned. This should be banned. And, 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 and I have more to say, and I'm going to, I'm almost done. So just bear with me. There's no way, there's no way I repeat the rich could enter engineer a way to use welfare for the poor against them. There's no way there's no way they're not that smart enough. They're not the evil. They, they wouldn't do it. So it looks futile to even help them so they could cut costs on welfare because it doesn't help because it just makes them stupider. Um, that I don't know. Is that true? This is bullshit, I guess. Um, they could be, uh, they couldn't be the rich couldn't be that sinister. Or I mean, uh, the social working administrators who make a hundred thousand a year or, or, or more, uh, who, who are supposed to help the poor people, but are basically experimenting on them. Who, yeah, oh, geez, whiz, we, we're interrupted experimenting on. I, I, that's that's a far-fetched thing. Experiment on, and now you're getting in some really crazy shit, Mr. Conspiracy Theorist. I have to debunk all of it. Now, my ideas are, they're not my ideas, but these ideas are fucking absurd. And, and Malcolm X, too. Malcolm X, he loved social workers and thought, Malcolm X thought social workers were a great benefit to the black community and everybody else. Um. Uh, I think that's bullshit too. Again, the conspiracy theorist must not have read Malcolm X's bio autobiography or, not, or his biography, not autobiography, well, sort of by, by Alex Haley, but that's another story. But, you know, let's just color our world blackened. Shh.